and I'll have these on the <laughs> trouble. Good afternoon, my name is Josie Schwartz. My major is social sustainability, and my project, an interdisciplinary analysis of implementing hydration stations on campus, exists in conjunction with my internship, which is a sustainability internship. Before we begin, I'd like to thank my mentors, uh, Dr. Virginia McConnell, co-chair of this UMBC Climate Commitment Task Force and professor of the Economics Department, uh, David Hoffman, Assistant Director for Student Life, and Patricia Lanou, Director of the INDS Department, also my second mother. Mom, I still love you. <laughs> now, uh, I'd like to open up, before I, dis before I begin my uh, discussion of the project, I'd like to open up with a clip done by researcher Charles Moore, who is a leading authority on marine debris. Oh, we'll try to get some snow. Josie, what's he say? So the whole point <laughs> of this clip, uh, this guy is the leading, he's the most preeminent scholar on this particular matter, uh, marine litter. And he says that uh, as the market can do a lot of things for us, uh, it, it can't fix the, the irreparable damage that we've done to the ocean. Uh, he's, he also has studied, he's cited the North Pacific Garbage Patch, which I'll get later to my, into my presentation. And he says that there's no hope of cleaning the sea as if we tried there'd be no way we could pay for it, and it would uh, do irreparable damage to biodiversity as well. And so he, he, his solution is that we can't clean the seas uh, by and large, and so the only thing that we could do is try to stop it, before, stop it at the source before it goes into the sea. As four-fifths of the marine litter comes from land, stop it at land. That's his suggestion. And so I, I thought to myself, as soon as I saw this, I thought, how do we change? Whose fault is this? And I asked this not in a blaming way, just sort of as a way, my work by and large what I do for environmental sustainability is to say that these are our actions. This is what we do, and they have real consequences beyond the financial cost that we pay. Do I have the clicker? And you can click right from there, any of us. The main purpose of my project was to address the problem of consuming water in a socially irresponsible way on campus. In order to do this, I knew that I would have to identify the conditions that are causing this behavior, as well as the inhibitions to change. Identify three, three possible solutions. Ban the bottle, either fully or partially. Encourage drinking more tap water or bolster alternative means, which is what I end up choosing by implementing hydration stations. I researched many other places that had addressed the same problem. Washington University in St. Louis was the first to ban the bottle in 2009. With a population of just under 7,000, they estimate that they'll divert 1.5 million tons of plastic from a landfill. My methodology started with researching what the leading scholars have to say about the issue. I went to search for case studies of different projects that had specifically implemented hydration stations. Uh, I knew I would have to demonstrate all the benefits and the costs, the financial, the social, and the environmental, and then establish the, the stakeholders in which I would have to engage. I started with the three main disciplines of sociology, economics, and psychology, but as I progressed my research, I found very useful ecology, hydrology, and toxicology. My integration strategies were many. I started with reasoning by analogy. I wanted to look for other movements that have, were similar to my endeavors. The most useful was Rachel Carson's efforts to discontinue the use of DDT, a synthetic pesticide used on crops. And in the same way that she redefined a largely environmental problem as a human health problem, I wanted to do the same for my project by redefining a largely environmental problem as a human problem via the disposable bottles that we're drinking. From there, I would identify the linkages among disciplines in order to create a common ground. 
which would model a more comprehensive understanding. And with the implementation process, I was able to test the new understanding. I used uh, several main concepts and theories to guide my research. The first being symbiosis, and that everything's connected to everything. So I wanted to know, how can our actions at UMBC aid to fix this problem? Social engineering is a concept first taught to me by Jacques Fresco, and the idea is that you can engender change by engineering a community's environment, both socially and physically, to elicit the response that you want. My project also fits into a larger eco-mega trend, uh, transcending the campus community. In 2007, uh, the mayors of both San Francisco and Salt Lake City both banned the purchase of bottled water by any community, excuse me, by any government officials, for official government. The next theory was that of marginal cost and behavior, and the idea is that if you provide the community a way to hydrate in such a manner that they don't have to pay each time that they want to consume an additional bottle of water, that they'll drink more of it. Next, I address, I use imperfect information, and the idea here is that if people knew the real consequences of this practice, that maybe they might not drink as much. Finally, uh, which was a large guiding principle, was the health perception. I wanted to know why Americans are drinking 50 billion bottles a year, and why only eight out of every eight out of every ten are being sent to a landfill rather than being recycled. So I wanted to study the water here at UMBC. I wanted to know what are the reasons for and against each, and why I should advocate one over the other. In accordance uh, with a 2002 EPA-sponsored survey, the number one reason that Americans filter their water or buy bottled water is due to health-related concerns. So I wanted to check out our water here at UMBC. I found that we at UMBC get our water from Baltimore City, uh, city uh, and which comes from three main reservoirs, Pretty Boy, Liberty, and Lock Raven. Last year, in 2010, the city of Baltimore performed over 150,000 analyses on their water alone. And they tested for 90 different contaminants in accordance with EPA. Every single category we met and most of the time exceeded. There are a lot of concerns with tap water, one being that while Baltimore City does supply superior water, they can't account for poor plumbing components, and so which would lead to a lead contamination worry which uh, is the biggest concern for those who maybe are pregnant or young infants. The last concern is public access to the reservoirs, as the public is allowed to recreate on these areas. Before it being delivered to your spigot, the water goes and undergoes a rigorous purification process, where fluorine is added for strong, healthy teeth, chlorine is added to disinfect, and the Worries about lead contamination are, easily, are easy to solve, as all one has to do is run the water for about 30 seconds before they consume any. This was a concern of mine because I, I feared that with bottled water being for a standard bottled water purchase, the minimum is $1.68 on campus, and people might limit their consumption when they have to pay for each additional bottle. The, the FDA has no regulatory power over the bottled water industry. It cannot require bottled water companies to use certified labs or submit reports even if violations are found. Bottles made, the, all, all of the plastic bottles are made from petroleum, petrochemicals, and this is a concern because plastic is not purified by the remelting process like glass and metal. It begins to break down and melt below the boiling point of water. So the, the warmer your bottle gets, the more contaminants are leaching into your water. BPA is also a concern. Uh, it's been linked to cancer, birth defects, reproductive failures, depression, nausea, and even death. The environmental concerns start with the toxic byproducts from the manufacturing plants, as well as the North Pacific Garbage Patch that I alluded to alluding to my previous uh, comment at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, the impact of bottled water is estimated as 100 times worse than drinking tap water. I'd also like to point out the, the North Pacific Garbage Patch. It's estimated to be twice the size of Texas, 3 million tons. 
I also identified the cost of my project as over a 10-year period, the life of the product, as roughly $300. Now, this one has to do with savings and avoided costs. Savings meaning that uh, money the UMBC community would save as a result of the project, or avoided costs being costs that the UMBC, UMBC community would avoid as a result of the project, meaning that they can hydrate without paying $1.68 per bottle. Uh, based on a six-month filter replacement rate, each station filters 4,800 gallons of water, which is equivalent to 36,000 standard plastic bottles. These are the costs to the community drinking 12,000 bottles. Meanwhile, while we're paying a lot, the bottled water industry is making billions each year. The results of my project uh, was successfully received by the RLC, Retriever Learning Center, which is soon to be 24-hour study space in uh, the library due to be renovated this summer. And I predict that with the installation of the unit, water consumption at UMBC will increase, bottled water consumption will decrease, and UMBC will also experience a decrease in purchases of other bottled beverage like sodas. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Yes, Rebecca. Um, the hydrating water systems, if we got them or I guess other campuses, how many are usually on a campus? Typically, uh, many of them, they buy one for their main, uh, me, for my research, when I was deciding places to strategically put them, I wanted to look at high traffic areas, areas where students spend the most time, and areas that are most crucial to water. For UMBC, that translated to the commons, the library, and the rack. Uh, as of this point, it's only successfully been received by the library, but uh, most campuses put it in their student union uh, or their commons building. So, so one. So what have you learned from the process of trying to make this happen at UMBC? <laughs> Much. So even, even though that uh, it's economically lucrative, um, and it's environmentally uh, advantageous, uh, it's, it's still tough to get things implemented in a public university. I had to engage many stakeholders, and before, a lot of the times, with uh, this, was, this was David's particular expertise, he's, he's an expert on uh, civic engagement, and so he taught me how to engage stakeholders and how to do most of the work before I even go into the meetings that I set up. I had to set up a lot of meetings with the various stakeholders, including student groups, including faculty, and including the various administration for uh, the buildings that I was hoping to have the project received by. So the, the biggest thing that I learned from implementing this on campus is that you got to do a lot of research, and you gotta, and you got to get buy-in from a lot of people that the work should be done by and large before you even go into the meetings that you're pitching. So Josie, we have this station in the Retriever Learning Session before, hopefully, this summer. So you'll be able to see that. You're not here next year. Who's going to carry on? Have you set up some sort of uh, ongoing process someplace so that you come back next year and you can say, oh, there's hydration stations, three or four places, and they're being maintained, and somebody else is looking at how much less bottled water perhaps we're using on campus. The so what piece, you've done this, you've done research, what then? So I'm, I'm glad you asked that uh, because the, the hydration station will be uh, maintained by the library, they'll do the changing of the filters and uh, we've also added a line in the budget so that the SJ will um, replenish the filter every time the filter needs replacement. And my, I also, Im implementation, I'd like to make a distinction between uh, installing and implementing. Implementing, for me, indicates that there is a strategic location thought out for these specific uh, units. And then also, I'd like to uh, accompany the unit with an educational piece, uh, like a sign saying, by using the station, you're helping to reduce so many bottles of water. These Showing the triple bottom line, more than just the financial, more than saying, People know that they don't have to pay for the water. 
but to saying this this is helpful for the environment and this is also a socially responsible way to drink water. And and I hope the hope is that uh, this implementation will act as a beacon for many more to come. I hope that the success will lead to more. And I, and I see that as a very plausible uh, a plausible prediction as as alluded to, alluding to my presentation, the eco mega trend. You see people bringing their own grocery bags to the store, their own coffee mugs to the coffee shop. And so I think this is going to be a great hit, a great success, and people are going to see the merit in this, this product. Yes, Dr. McConnell. Um, so in looking, in terms of the research you did and looking at all this through this, through this whole semester, you know, you, you mentioned a number of different possible benefits that could uh, arise from this, including several health benefits, including not drinking tap water, which might be, you know, unhealthful itself, the, the plastic in the bottles themselves. Um, and then there's the waste issue, which you raised in the beginning with the, the clip and, and discussion about the sort of the, the disposal of these bottles. So just, and, and then there's other things too, I think, that you, you thought about through the semester. So which one, does any of these dominate, or did you learn, did anything surprise you in terms of which of these is most important in terms of their real benefits if we were to be able to reduce the quantity of these bottles that we consume? Yeah, actually, again, I'm, I'm glad that you asked that. For, for me, uh, mainly starting the project concerned with environmental sustainability, understanding that our health is directly dependent on the health of our ecosystems. I was worried about all the bottles that were going in the landfills, all the ones that weren't getting recycled, and even the many uh, that the North Pacific Garbage Patch is, is estimated to be 90% plastics. And of the 90% plastics, it's, as uh, researcher Charles Moore says that most of them are plastic bottles. And so coming, uh, starting from an environmental concern, uh, Really, we, we as a society hear many environmental concerns. I don't think it's news to anybody. And so um, the dominating factor ended up being the health concerns, telling people when you tell somebody that BPA causes a whole slew of health, health concerns and that it has been linked to uh, nausea, depression, and even death, you know, those type of, those type of concerns motiv motivate people to act in a way that telling people that 50 million bottles are consumed by the U.S. just, just doesn't motivate them to act. And so I, I found that, well, for me and uh, <laughs> others who share the same mentality, it's sort of drop, driven by the environmental concern uh, largely, but it, it turned out to be that the, the health concern is really, was the best way to approach different people, uh, different stakeholders mm -hmm. about this, this project and sort of the merit. That's, that's kind of what I sold it on.